Hey, what's up, my construction entrepreneurs? Tyrone Jones here with the Construction Entrepreneur School and Services. And this is four or five of how to become a California licensed contractor for 2021. Let's jump right into it. What are the financial requirements? Now, a, a lot of people think that um, um, the, the CSLB is going to require you to submit your bank account records. And um, there's no real uh, financial requirements to actually get your license. They're not um, asking for verification of funds. Uh, so you do not have to worry about that. Okay. Um, there are there are other applications outside of the CSLB that will require to, to to know how you started your company, but at the CSLB at this time, um, they're, they're just requiring you to pay the fees that um, that they're asking for to cover your contractor's license um, amount, your bond. And, thing, and your application fee and things like that. They're not asking for any financial requirements that you may have to verify, okay? Next, um, they will require you to get a $15,000 bond, okay? Uh, uh, the bond is filed on the, on, uh, for the benefit of the consumer who may be damaged as a result of defective construction or other license law violations and for the benefit of employees who have not been paid wages that are due to them. So understand that this bond, uh, and a lot of contractors, once they get their license, they, 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 they love to put on their, their trucks, their vehicles, their advertisements, their, their business cars that, uh, that they're uh, licensed and bonded or insured and bonded. And, um, and a lot of times, the only bond they have is this $15,000 bond. That bond is just a liability insurance that the board actually has us take out for us in case we don't meet our obligations as contractors, whether if that's you know uh, toward a consumer or toward an employee. And they will be able to pull from this $15,000 bond to pay uh, toward those obligations that we that we have not met or that we fail to meet, okay? Whether we agree or disagree, that bond is insurance on us in case there is um, a uh, violation on our end as a contractor. So that bond is a $15,000 bond that you will have to attain after you pass the state exam. Okay, uh, that bond can cost you that bond in the beginning because you have no company uh, credit that they can base it on. It will be based on your personal credit. So if your credit is uh, terrible, you have a low score, low score, then uh, that bond can cost you anywhere from five to seven hundred to a thousand dollars, depending on how bad your credit is. But always remember, you can always start with payments. If, if that amount is too high for you at that time, um, I have seen it at 500 and people pay $50 down and start on a monthly uh, plan, okay? Um, and then if you have $15,000 in the bank that you can actually give to the state board so they can hold, um, uh, instead of you following the bond, they can actually take that check as well. So you can actually write a check for $15,000 and it'd be just the same as you filing for a bond. Okay, if, you can, if you're in a position where you can have $15,000 tied up for as long as you're contracting out there, then that is an option as well. All right, examination eligibility requirements. There's no minimum requirements on education. Um, the board does not ask for verification as far as did you did you did you uh, did you pass the GED? Did you get a high school diploma or anything like that? You have to be 18 years old. You have to have a minimum of four years of experience within a 10-year period. That means that if you're 18 years old, okay. That means if you're 18 years old, 
and you're trying to get your, uh, your, 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 your contractor's license, they're expecting that at 14, you were working because they want you to have a minimum of four years of experience. And at four years, they want it to be at a journeyman's level or higher. So, um, uh, so you, you, you know, I had some 18 year olds come to me and actually uh, want to file for their license. I haven't actually uh, got anyone approved that's 18 years or older. Um, I tend to uh, uh, try to uh, see what we can actually work out uh, in the end, those individuals that have come to our school uh, decided to hold off. Uh, so I have no record of uh, pushing an application through of an 18-year-old, but that basically means that at 14, that at 14 they were working um, as a minor, and um, and and remember those years have to be at a journeyman type level, um, and uh, they want some hands-on experience. Okay, now the CSAB may grant up to three years of credit toward um, the four years of requirement for completed education and or apprenticeship programs. Now, um, uh, the apprenticeship programs you need to you need to complete you you have to complete this education or this apprenticeship program. Okay. Now they may award up to three years, but understand that it's a case by case scenario. Okay, they, they don't automatically just award you four years, uh, three years credit. Okay, it all depends on uh, uh, um, uh, what 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 is it pertaining to. Okay, so is it dealing with the construction industry, or is it dealing with uh, uh, another part? You know. Uh, you know your majors in science, political science, something like that, right? Uh, so that is going to count toward uh, you getting credits um, toward these four years of experience. Now, even if you're getting credits, okay, you must have one year of hands-on experience, okay? Now you have to remember this when you're actually filling out your application, because a lot of times. A lot of applicants think that they want you to have journeyman level, which is right. They want you to have journeyman level or higher experiences, experience. So when they write out their description of, uh, of how they obtain this experience, they leave out the hands-on part. And a lot of applications get kicked back because it doesn't verify that they had hands-on. They just talk about managing guys and managing crews, running projects and stuff like, hey, we you know, I, I, I worked on a crew and we put together this and, and put together that. So make sure that you also um, aware of the uh, minimum of one year hands on experience that they're requiring. All right, reciprocity. Uh, there's only a few states that uh, has reciprocity programs with the state of California, and that's Arizona, Nevada, and our Utah. Okay. Now, what does this mean? That means that if you are in New York and you come here, you want to count the years um, as a contractor in New York to be credited here, um, it may not work because there's a reciprocity program for these states already in place. Okay, I'm not saying to just give up, but what I'm saying is that this is what's in place uh, and uh, the, the requirements for Arizona, Nevada, and Utah, both sides, okay? Remember, it's a program for both sides. That means whether you're coming from California to Arizona or Nevada or Utah or vice versa, okay? You must have a license in good standing for five years, not just working, not just being an employee and having the four years experience, okay? We're talking about being an actual contractor and using those contractor years to actually apply to be a contractor here. Because California wants you to have the experience here, so they have selected a few states that um, that they have a program set up with that you can come on over if you actually have a contractor license there to where you can have one here. Okay, uh, uh, but I have a ton of experience from other states. I'm not saying you're ruled out. You won't be the only person that 
been denied or have gotten a license from other states by using your experience there. You may be required to produce a little bit more than just uh, a, a letter or form filled out um, that they require for the reciprocity program to be approved. You may have to submit some other challenging information from the awarding authorities there for the awarding authorities here in California. Okay. All right. What's holding you back <clears throat> to get your contractor's license? Okay. A lot of times we just got to get out our own way. Okay. Um, are you concerned about what, what other state? Uh, too much pressure. Uh, you don't have to start right away. Um, so a lot of times uh, we're concerned about what others think, like uh, especially family members, especially when you tell them like, hey, I want to own my own business. And they look at you and judge you right away because they have something, uh, a vision in mind of what someone that owns their own business looks like, how they operate, how they move, uh, how, they, how their personality is. And you may not fit that mold that they have in their mind. And you may get some backlash. You may feel uh, that they're not fully supportive. Uh, you, you know, we're always concerned about what our family members, especially our close family members, think about what we're doing, what we're voicing, you know, and the routes that we're taking. So, are you concerned about what others think? You know, is it too much pressure? Uh, I would say break it down into small chunks. You know, uh, start off with a little bit. You know, you, you can't turn turn things around and, and make yourself into something that you're not overnight. Okay. Uh, but if you do want to own your own business, sometimes you do have to earn the trust from the others around you. I'm not saying that they need to dictate what, you know, how things need to go with you. If you decide you want to, you know, get your license, I say give it a shot. But there may be some things that you need to, to fine tune. There may be some areas that you need to uh, relook at. Okay, one of the hardest things I found from when 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 I got my license, it took me a while to actually start running my business on my own. I, I kept my job for a, a long time, but what I found when I did transition from that nine to five to being an, a full full fledged entrepreneur was that uh, uh, that discipline. You know, uh, that discipline was very hard to keep. I was on a strict uh, program. You know, I got up at four o'clock in the morning, left the house at five o'clock, you know, got to work at six, worked all day, took lunch, uh, took a break, uh, got off of work, you know, talked to some people, drove home, you know, prepare, you know, to put my lunch stuff up, prepare my lunch for tomorrow. You know, I, it was a program I was on when I got to being a full on entrepreneur, I lost, I lost a lot of that discipline because I was like, I don't have to answer nobody. You know, I was waking up late, doing what I wanted to do and I fell off. So you gotta learn how to keep the discipline. You have to be strict on yourself and be steadfast at that and give yourself what you gave that other, give your company what you gave the other company that you used to work for and more. Okay, um, you can say I don't have enough money. A lot of things I hear from that that drive other people away is that a lot of folks say I don't want to own my own company because the insurance is too much. Listen, insurance is not too much. At times, uh, insurance can be challenging, especially uh, if if you had a few bad jobs. Uh, but insurance gets charged uh, into the job. So if you're operating margins are right and uh, jobs will pay for itself. Okay. If your overhead percentage is correct. That's why it's important to know your overhead percentage. You know, that way the insurance that's included in your overhead percentage, you charge that that percentage to that job so they can get covered. Okay, people are not in business because insurance is too much. People are not in business because they don't have enough money. Listen, you can make money at this. There, there's opportunity to be a contractor. Okay, it's opportunity that the construction industry is a very lucrative industry. So don't let people, uh, don't, don't, don't let things hold you back by what people are saying. That's not even in the position that you're seeking to be in. 
Okay, we need to stop listening to people that are not even owners when you're trying to be an owner. Stop. All right, so that's the end of part four of this five part series. Okay, and I'll see you on the next video, but I want to bring up, um, we do have a, a course. Okay, I just talked about understanding your overhead. We do have a course called Understanding Your, your Construction Overhead. Uh, it's right now on our website for four dollars and ninety nine cents. Okay, I want you to check this thing out it's on our website for four dollars and ninety nine cents. Okay, and you will learn. Uh, 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 you will receive the spreadsheet so you can build your overhead uh, uh, costs. Uh, you will see. You can add salary in there. Uh, for yourself or whoever else you have on the salary. And one thing, this overhead, one thing, once you understand your overhead, one of the very important things that you will find out is the target sales revenue that you need to achieve. By having all your sales, all your overhead total, it will let you know that for this month, you need to bring in $80,000. For this month, you need to bring in $60,000 or $150,000. That lets you know that the $150,000 will cover your overhead costs, uh, including you know, the assurances that, that people are saying out there, insurance is too much or too expensive to, to run your own company. This is what goes into your overhead. Learn your overhead. This is very important. Look, there's too many of us out here that understands how to uh, work with our hands and we don't understand the admin part of having a business okay this course is priced very low it will not be priced this low for long so take advantage of it go to the website there will also will be a link down in the description click on the link purchase the course okay it's for four dollars and ninety nine cents, and you're going to gain so much value out of this. There's so many people that are are, are just I, I, I'm getting calls, and I always are getting calls for people that are actually saying that this course has helped them out so much. There's so much they're finding out that they're missing with running a, a successful company. Understand these important things: your overhead percentage your labor burden percentage, okay? Those are the overhead, labor burden, your profit percentage, uh, or, or, or margin. You got to learn how to understand your numbers to be successful in this business. If you want to guess at your numbers and, 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 and constantly not understand how, how you make money as a contractor, true money as a contractor, Getting to the point where you're legal, where you, you, you're accounting for things that you need to account for to stay in business. It's just, it, it, it. check out the course, something that every contractor should be taking, every contractor should understand. Um, it's called Understanding Your Construction Company Overhead. Okay, it's for four nine nine. dollars It'll be a link down in the description and you can check our website out. Okay, website link is also down in the description. My Construction Entrepreneurs, I'm going to let you go with that. I'll see you on the next video. This will be the last one in this series on how to become a, con a, a California licensed contractor for 2021. Hustle hard, then hustle harder. Catch you guys on the next one.